I've got a question from the user Arnell Studio, how to create a multiple select question in an interactive video. Now in this video, I'll show you step by step how to set this up in Storyline 360. So I've done some preparations and I already created the project and uh, placed a video on the slide and now built this interaction together. So the first step is to add two slide layers. Now let's create the first one and I will name this question one. And now let's add the second slide layer and I'll call this feedback one. So, and then now it's clear they belong together in case you want to add more questions to our interactive video. Now I return to the base layer here and I will select the, sh uh, uh, select the shape. So what I will do is I'll go to insert, go to shape, uh, choose a round, a round, round shape and place it here. Now I can do some formatting. So for instance, I can place a one in it, format it, let's fill orange and give it a white border of four. I think that's okay. Oh now it's blue, so that's white. And what I'll do is I'll uh, make it that it will start at three seconds and it will end at eight seconds. So therefore I go to timing and I'll uncheck show until end of slide and for duration I enter five seconds and you'll see this is now visible from three to eight seconds. So when a user clicks the oval slide layer question one should appear. So let's add a trigger that shows question one when a user clicks. So I'll select or oval, go to triggers. Now I'll create the action that says show layer, not feedback one, but question one, and when the user clicks on oval one, and now I'll click OK. Now we're finished on the base layer for now. Let's go to slide layer question one. So I click slide layer question one for now, so it's selected. And the first step is to change the properties of the slide layer. So I right click with my mouse and I'll go to properties. And what I'll do now is I'll check a past timeline of base layer. So the video pauses when a question one layer is shown and I uncheck hide other slide layers and I'll close. Now, and the next step is to add the objects that form my question. So what I'll need is four answer options, now a question and a submit button. And we must make sure that the answer options have a selected state. Now we need the states when we create triggers on the submit button, but first let's create the objects. So for the question, I go to insert, go to text box. And you can also press Ctrl plus T on your keyboard and I'll paste my question. So now let's do some formatting. So I want to make it bold, uh, white, and I think 20 pixels is okay. And now let's align it in the middle. Oh yeah, and before I forget, what we also need is uh, a background. Uh, otherwise the text is not uh, readable on the video. So what I will do is I'll insert a shape and I can draw it here on my slide and it must be on the timeline behind the text layer. I want it to be black and now I'll go to no, black and I want now to go to the format shape window and I set the transparency on 50%. So I think this is okay. Uh, now I create four answer options. So what I'll do, I'll go to insert, go to shape, pick an oval, press one. And what I will do now is I'll choose a fill color and also a border. Now you think, why can you see, can't you see the text? And what I will do is I'll go to the form and shape window again and I'll set the transparency to a hundred percent. And now you can click in the middle. Otherwise that isn't possible. So what I'll do is Add some weight to the border and add this, create this bolt. So this is okay. And let's create also a selected state. So therefore I go to states, edit state, create a new state. And I'll choose selected, go to add. And now the state is created. And now let's format this state. So that's okay, but I don't want it to be blue. I want it to be white. And no, the shape fill doesn't have to be white, it can be blue. So this is okay for now. So I click on done editing states. And what I do now is I'll copy this and paste it. So this will be answer option two, three, and four. And now let's add the textual answer options. Now I already prepared them, so I will paste them on my slide. 
you'll see it here and I also uh, only have to do some alignment so the alignment is done so now let's create a submit button so I'll go to insert and I create a shape here I enter submit and I'll give it a white fill and also a white border and now I'll, I'll go to my format shape window again and set the transparency to a hundred not a 1400 but a hundred percent so that's okay and this can be bold and I want the corners that they be more rounded so that's the submit mid button and the next step is to create a true false variable called q1 so we know that it's connected to this question and we need this variable later on so I'll go to my variable panel and you see that I already created a variable here so what you must do click the plus sign enter your variable name go to type check true false and then you can click on ok now let's go uh, click on add and now we can go to feedback layer one now here I'll also uncheck the settings in the properties to hide all slide layers so that I have done and now the next step is to add feedback text here now on the feedback layer a uh, feedback one layer I'll add two text boxes for the feedback so I'll go to insert here a text box and I'll draw a text box on my on my on my slide so the first is that right all answers are correct now let's do some formatting again uh, I want it white I want it all to be at one line I see I have a mistake here so that's better and now let's arrange it in the middle horizontally and give this text box the proper name so this will be text correct now I can copy this text paste it and make this wrong so and no, that's wrong all answers are correct let's arrange this in the middle so this is rooted so and that's okay now what I'll do for this text two text boxes I'll set the initial state on hidden so that's done for this one and let's do it also for this one and the next step is to add two triggers that will show the text boxes if you answer the question on this layer so what I'll do is I'll go to triggers I'll choose change state of action and uh, we can do first I want to first do it the correct slide layer to normal and not when user clicks but when the timeline starts on this layer and I'll give it a condition that when Q1 is equal to true so then we know Storyline has to show the correct layer now I can copy this and paste it and what we'll do now is we say on this layer so and now we change text correct to text wrong and Q1 to false so this means that if we answer the question incorrectly Storyline shows text wrong because Q1 is false. But when does the variable Q1 changes? No, not yet in this example. So we go back to slide layer question one and add some triggers to the submitted button there to let the Q1 variable change. Now I'm on the question one slide layer again. And remember that all the answer options has, have a selected state and we're gonna use that selected state as a condition. So what I'll do now, I'll create a trigger that changes the variable q1 to true when all the answer options are selected so let's change the action to adjust variable which one correct a variable q1 to true not when timeline starts but when the user clicks on my rectangle my rectangle button 2 and i give it um, a condition and i'll not use variable but objects so what i'll do now here is say in if oval one is equal to selected and i'll do the same for the other ovals so oval two is selected oval three is selected and also oval four is selected now to trigger the incorrect feedback on the feedback layer we don't need a trigger because if not all answer options are selected the q1 variable does not change and is still false so but we need another trigger here to show uh, the new layer so what we'll do now is create a trigger that says show layer feedback one when user clicks rectangle two 
And what I'll also want is that I'll want to hide the submit button. So I'll say change state off, button submit to hidden when user clicks on rectangle two. And now I click on okay. So now let's preview this interactive video slide. So I'll go to preview and go to this slide. Now we have to wait when it's loaded and also wait when the hotspot appears. So the hotspot appears, you see the video is still playing. I click on the hotspot. Now the video stops on the background and we now see question one layer. So what I'll do now is I'll select all the answer options and click on submit. And you'll see the feedback, that's right, all the answer options are correct. Now let's replay this slide to see what it does if you don't, don't click all the answer options. So I click here and for instance, I click only on the fourth answer option, click on submit and you'll see that's wrong. All answer options are correct. So this way you can build a multiple select question uh, on top of an interactive video. Uh, I hope that this is something that you can use in your next storyline project. I'm transforming my articulate storyline classroom training and also my YouTube tutorials to a laser focused online course on how to create engaging e-learning training with articulate storyline. Now, are you interested? You can join my waiting list and you'll be the first one to know when my online course will launch. You can find the link to the waiting list in the description of this video below. And if you want to create great engaging e-learning and articulate storyline, make sure that you get my free step-by-step -step guide on how I create e-learning in articulate storyline. And I know for sure that it will help you because it describes my whole process that I use for every e-learning module in articulate storyline that I build. And was this video useful to you? Then hit the like button below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos.